Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to talk a little bit about luminosity in watches, tritium lume, chemical lume, and what's the difference and why do you care? So lume on a watch is the basic understanding that, well, you know, a watch, you want to be able to read the time, and you want to be able to read the time during the day or the night. Not every watch includes lume. I, I tend to like watches that include lume, but there, there have been many ways throughout history to do this. I mean, in the old days, they used radium, which was a very super effective luminous compound, but it was also super radioactive, and it killed the people who applied it, and it radiated the whole thing. It was a really bad approach, particularly if you're applying it with a paintbrush and then lick the tip to get the brush extra fine. Yeah, that's going to kill you. Um, really unfortunate. We tend to like our watches not to kill people, so we skip the radium thing. And then after the radium, they moved into a different radioactive compound and they used tritium lume compounds. This is different than tritium tubes, and we'll talk about that in a bit here. But this is where they used a paint that was doped with tritium. It was safer than radium, but it's still radioactivity based. And you'll see this on all the Rolexes, etc. You'll see a watch where it's labeled like Swiss T Swiss or something like that, a Swiss T made or a T or an H3. Whatever it is, it's a different kind of luminous paint based in radioactivity. It worked well at the time, but unfortunately, because radioactive compounds naturally decay, it doesn't last very long. And so now an old tritium uh, dialed wristwatch from any company will basically not have any lube. Um, and so vintage watches, you know, from the 90s or earlier, I'm not saying 90s is vintage, by the way, I'm just saying that older watches, even from that era and back, are very, very often not going to have acceptable lube by modern standards these days. So anyways, that's what we used to do in the past. But nowadays, lube comes into two basic categories in modern wristwatches. So one approach is chemical lume, um, and that's what this guy here is using. It's also called luminous compound or afterglow pigment. Lumibrite is the uh, Seiko name. Luminova is super luminova, really prominent brand names. Uh, and then chromolite is what Rolex calls it. But basically, it's all a strontium alumate compound that is activated by external light, uh, whether that's sunlight or flashlight, a UV flashlight, whatever. It'll charge it and then glows all night long. I'm going to use this flashlight here and charge this watch pretty good. There we go. And so what we can see here is that this is glowing very, very brightly. It's like any kind of glow-in-the-dark sort of compound that you, you know, have anywhere, but it's just very, very efficient. Um, if you activate this or charge it, so to speak, with a flashlight or something, um, it will be on all night long, so to speak. It will fade absolutely 100%. In fact, we'll see that in the test in just a moment here. But it will be visible to adjusted eyes for a good long time, and it's great in that way. So that's how chemical loom works. You activate it and then it glows for a while. The big question with chemical loom is the thickness of application, basically how well it's put on. You can put a little tiny, even if you take a great compound, like the Super Luminova, the Chroma Light, Luma Bright, whatever, even if you take a great compound, if you apply it very thinly, if there's not much of it, it won't glow for very long. You'll get a little tiny bit. In fact, you'll see a Citizen, the BM8180 on the end in my little test there, has very, very thin application on the hours, so it doesn't glow very brightly. But anyways, that's a big thing, and different brands use their loom differently, and even different watches within the same brand. Um, you know, Seiko tends to lay it on very thick. Uh, Citizen in the higher end tends to do a pretty good job, too. Dive watches tend to be heavily loomed, and this Omega Planet Ocean is really, really great in terms of loom. It's got all kinds of thickness and glows all damn night long. But many watches use too little lume and it fades too quickly and that's, that's just a really sad thing. But anyways, that's chemical lume. It's some chemical that they put in there that absorbs light and then emits it overnight. On the other side are tritium tubes. Tritium tubes, or a gaseous tritium light source, like seen on this little watch, which is by Reactor. It's a lesser known brand, but what you can see here, I hope, is that on top of these hands, there are actually little tubes right there. And then there's a tube at 3, at noon, at, uh, at uh, 9, and then down at 6 here. And those tubes actually contain a small uh, amount of tritium gas, which is a radioactive compound. It's uh, H3. It's an isotope, that is. Um, and it releases radioactive radioactivity all the time. Every moment of every day, this little tube here contains an isotope that's releasing radioactivity. That radioactivity is then hitting phosphor, which is coating the outside of this tube, and then bam, that emits light. 
Um, and it's a very, very interesting little atomic process, and it's kind of cool from a chemistry perspective. Um, the thing is, relatively few makers use tritium tubes in their watches. There, there are definitely people out there. Um, Luminox, I think, does some. Reactor obviously does. Um, one of the big ones is Ball. Uh, they were a watchmaking company. They do higher-end stuff, and they tend to use a lot of tritium. Um, and, and it's very neat. But the advantage that tritium has, and we'll talk about strengths and weaknesses more strongly, is that it doesn't need any activation. There is also conventional loom on this watch. The 12, the others, guys, those are all conventionally loom, but tritium will always be glowing all the time. During the day, it's glowing. At night, it's glowing. In the morning, it's glowing. In the evening, it's glowing. It's always freaking glowing. Unfortunately, though, tritium has an Achilles heel, and we touched on that in the vintage already, but tritium as a, a compound has a half-life of 12.5 years. What this means is that every 12 and a half years, half of what was tritium in there has become helium. And uh, so every 12.5 years, as a result, the loom will be half as bright as it was when it started. And this is this falls off very, very quickly. And this is why old tritium watches are basically unloomed. And so if you plan on keeping this watch for more than 12 years and you want strong loom, after a while, you're going to be replacing those tubes. And unfortunately, relatively few makers do that. Like Ball will do it for you, but it costs a good deal of money. In some cases, it costs almost as much as the watch to do it because they're replacing a bunch of little tubes of radioactive gas. I mean, it's not a trivial thing. And you can't take it down to the guy at the sea as to do a tritium swap on you. So um, that is the Achilles heel of tritium. But the strength of it is that it's glowing all the time. It doesn't need activation, and it's nice and steady. So to get an illustration of this, let's cut to my nighttime secret testing lab, also known as my uh, bathroom floor, to uh, take a look at these uh, in action here and do a little time lapse. Greetings from my secret nighttime testing lab. Right now on the floor, I have four different watches right in front of me. This is the Citizen BM8180, Citizen Promaster Diver. Both of these are using Citizen's blue conventional chemical loom. This guy is a watch by Reactor Watches. Um, and so you can see here that in addition to having chemical loom, it has loom tubes. It has tritium loom on the hour hand, the minute hand, and then at 9, 6, 3, and uh, uh, 12. And then over here is my Omega Planet Ocean, which is using Super Luminova Chemical Loom. So what I'm going to do is use a flashlight here, and I'm going to charge each of these watches very strongly with this flashlight. And this will leave the loom on these watches as good as it will get certainly on the chemical loom. And in fact, on the tritium guy, we can see that there is a marked difference. That right now, freshly after charging, the chemical loom uh, on the hour hands is much, much brighter than the tritium loom, say, that you can see right here above the minute hand, or on the minute hand. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'll uh, leave these guys like this for uh, 30 minutes, and then I'll come back and I'll film again. At that point, the chemical loom will have had a chance to wear off a little bit, and uh, hopefully we'll see the difference start to emerge later, and uh, a lot has changed. Believe it or not, we are still looking at those same four watches. But the thing is, chemical loom gets way, way, way dimmer after a good amount of time there. And in fact, what we can see here is I am right now pointing the camera directly here. I'll give you a little bit of light to let you see what's going on. But I will point the camera directly at each one of these watches, and you can just barely see any of the loom on the chemically loomed watches. This is the ProMaster Diver, and this little guy right here is the Omega, which has probably the brightest chemical loom of any of them. But then if we look over here in the center, what we can see here is that right now, this is the tritium uh, watch, and actually the four points that are glowing up in the corners there are the tritium, and then you see the two tritium things on the uh, hands themselves. At this point in time, subjectively, I know you can't really see it that well, but what is glowing most strongly out of any of these guys are the tritium tubes on the uh, on the tritium watch. Everything else is relatively dim to my unadjusted eyes. And so that really kind of seals the deal, so to speak. What tritium brings you is not absolute brightness, but staying power. 30 minutes later, the tritium is absolutely visible, whereas the chemical is just barely there. There you go, you can see both of them there. And it will just get more and more pronounced over time. Both are fine for adjusted eyes, but tritium will always take the uh, take the cake in the long game. Let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the table. 
Now, to be 100% clear, all four of those watches were very readable to me, even with my mildly unadjusted eyes. The camera makes that look a lot worse than it actually was. Uh, but the thing is, the tritium was way brighter than any of them, even through my eyes there, and so it is an important point. But anyways, let's talk about the strengths of tritium and then the strengths of chemical. On the tritium side, we were just touching on this, is that the, the, the tritium has staying power. Tritium will be constantly bright and bright and bright and bright. There is zero fade-off during the course of a, a single night or even a you know two days in the darkness um it will glow consistently forever whereas luminova has a constant fall off by the end of the night luminova it, particularly if it's poorly applied uh will be almost unreadable or in some cases just a lot less bright um again i like heavy loom and some of them do a good job of it the other major, well, another major advantage Tritium has is that it doesn't require any charging or activation. This is getting all of its uh, power, all of its energy, so to speak, from this radioactive reaction. So even if you are in a, if you're a mole person, you haven't seen light for weeks living in the subway system, the thing is your watch is going to glow very clearly. It's using tritium. Uh, you don't ever need to charge it. It doesn't need anything to glow. It will just glow and glow and glow. This seems like maybe an obscure example if you're not a mole person, but it does have relevance. You know, most of the time with chemical loom, you'll get a good charge off of the sun at some point in time during the day. Or you can even hold it up to your desk lamp and it should be fine. And that'll get you through the night readably no freaking problem. But with tritium, it's just never a concern. Even if your shirt cuff has been over your wrist all day and so your watch never got a full charge, that's okay. It doesn't freaking matter. The tritium will glow until all the atoms turn into helium. And that's good. Um, Two other quick advantages for tritium. One is that you get a very nice long-lasting coloration. You saw on the Omega that um, this, the, the hour hand was a slightly different color than the minute hand in this guy. Um, at very, at very first. But the thing is that fades very quickly and after a while all Luminova starts to look about the same. Whereas Tritium is very easily visible as orange, green, 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 green. Um, you can do all sorts of different colors in Tritium. Well, at least several different colors. Um, and it will last forever and look very very well last for a long time and look very very good then finally tritium is really freaking cool there is a tiny little radioactive reaction here that is causing light to emit from my wrist due to the power of freaking atoms that's excellent. And so those are the strengths of tritium. It's got a much longer duration of brightness with incredible staying power. It doesn't require activation or charging. You get coloration that lasts a long time and is very, very strong, and it's really freaking cool. Let's talk about the strengths of chemical. Chemical loom has major advantages in that it is brighter when it's freshly charged. I mean, you saw that initially when I did the flashlight charge. It was like, wow. And indeed, a chemical loom has a really good wow factor. If you're wearing a watch with a great chemical loom and you walk from outside into a dark room, your watch will be blazing. And that's kind of neat. I'll be honest. I'm crazy. But that, that's true. But that has an advantage because if you walk into a dark room from outdoors and you need to look at your watch, your eyes are not going to yet be adjusted to the dark. And so the chemical loom being extra bright at that moment will kind of work nicely with your eyes in concert. It's, it is very, very nice. And so you get that initial burst of incredible brightness. And even if it fades off, that initial brightness can be neat. Next thing is that it should stay stable over time. I mean, we've not had these luminous compounds quite long enough to know for absolute sure. I mean, maybe super luminova will start to flake or something. I don't freaking know. Hopefully they've tested that. But we know for a fact that every 12.5 years, this watch will be half as bright as it was previously. That is a, a simple fact of, of chemistry, of physics, of life. And so Luminova should be good to go, or any of the chemical looms should be good to go for many years to come, whereas tritium, we know for a fact, will not be. The next issue, or I'm sorry, next strength of chemical is that it is paint. It's thinner, it's easy to apply. You can apply loom to a, the hand of a watch just by cutting a hole in there and then using the paint to fill in that little gap. And you can apply it thickly in that way. And a thick color, you know, a thick layer of loom isn't all that thick in the grand scheme of things. Whereas on this guy, you can see that there is strong vertical relief between the two hands. And that's because tritium needs to be, at least these kinds of tritium uses, need to be inside these tubes. And those tubes are thick. They're tubes. They're three-dimensional. As opposed to paint, which is much flatter. And so it tends to be the case that heavily tritium-loomed watches tend to be very thick and tall as a result of that. And then finally, on, on the strength side for chemical is that it is still absolutely good to go. Even though it is a lot less fancy, specialized, whatever, 
it, particularly if you do a charge of the, uh, the the watch overnight, and I tend to do that. It's sort of a bedtime routine for me. I am a giant nerd, but I'll take a UV flashlight and charge my watch loom right before I go to bed. I, I feel vaguely like somebody should be giving me a wedgie for just saying that, but look, it's, it's, it's a fact. It's how I roll. But anyways, overnight use, it is absolutely freaking fine. Absolutely as good as tritium for me. Even if it's a little bit less bright late at night, it's still perfectly legible when the loom is done well. So those are the strengths of chemical loom, is that it is absolutely good to go for overnight use. It's much thinner and easy to apply, which means fewer design compromises. You don't need a watch that's as crazy thick. Um, it should stay stable over time, or at least we know that this will not. And then finally, it is brighter when it's freshly charged. Let's talk a final conclusion here. Look, final conclusion, I mean, to start with, Loom is awesome. Maybe I'm just still that in a 12-year-old who really thinks glow-in-the-dark stuff is awesome. Putting little stickers up on the roof of his room in the pattern of constellations because he's a giant freaking nerd. Like I said, guys, nerd. You get this. But anyways, um, so Loom is great, and there is a lot of joy, at least for me, to walking into a dark room after I've been outside and seeing my watch just blazing brightly. I freaking love that but nerd. Um, the thing is, in terms of tritium versus chemical, um, if you are somebody who is mostly out and about at night, so for instance, you work night shifts, and so you're not reliably getting a full charge off of the sun during the day, and you need constant readability above all else with night-adjusted eyes, then you know what? Tritium is a really good choice, because it is truly constant, and you can get yourself a nice tritium watch that will glow very brightly, and some watches actually combine the two with a luminous compound as well as tritium, so you can Kind of get the best of both worlds, short-term readability as well as the long-term stay in power, and that can be pretty excellent. So there are lots of great watches that use tritium loom. The ball stuff is great, even if it's not the my style, all of it that is, I absolutely want to pick one of those guys up and check more of that out. But that said, I think that for most people, a thickly applied, well-done chemical loom absolutely wins, because when it's applied properly, when there's enough of it, and it's charged regularly, it is nearly as good as tritium for everyday practical sorts of use. It will be just as bright most of the time that you need it. Well, okay, maybe not just as bright, but it will be absolutely bright enough most of the time that it's not really a problem. And you get the long-term viability. If I buy this watch, for instance, and I use tritium, I know that in 12 years, it's no longer going to have the acceptable loom to me. Whereas, you know, with the Luminova, I think it's going to be just fine. And they can always re-loom it a lot more easily than they can retube it. Um, and you also get the short-term brightness. And frankly, it's a lot less limiting in your options. There were relatively few makers who use tritium, but pretty much any good maker these days will use some variety of high-end luminous compound. So anyways, that's loom. Um, chemical is great for most people. Tritium has its uses, but by and large, I think you're going to be okay over here, and that's a good thing because it gives you way more options. Hope this has been interesting to you, that you maybe learned something, that it lit up your life, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.